Let me invite my YouTube folks who watch me all over the world. Welcome to Covenant Family Church, where Jesus is Lord. This is a family church, a charismatic teaching center, and yes, from North Tulsa, we are reaching the whole world. Welcome. And I know the word will prick your heart today. It will change you. You are born again, it will get you ready for heaven. If you are not born again, you want to. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. The title of my message is Seven Separation of Abraham. I should have preached this message before I preached the first message on trust God. But you know how it is when you study, 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 the path of the righteous get brighter and brighter. More revelation comes. So you can call this trust God part seven, but I'm calling it seven separations of Abraham. Let me read only one verse. Genesis 22, verse 1, New King James. Now it came to pass, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Yeah. Go ahead and have your seats, please. When we say we are Christians, we are telling everybody, I am separated. That's what Christians are. We are separated from the world. Separated for God. Listen to me. It's only wonderful thing that we are separated from, separated to, for. In other words, folks don't like to preach on sanctification. Because we think like, my name is Jimmy, and I take it all you give me. We like to just get, 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 get. But what I am talking? Christian walk is a journey. Nobody has arrived, including me. Now some of you think you have arrived, but uh, that's what you think. The path of the righteous get brighter and brighter. And let me say to start with, every day, God will strip from you which is not like him. God will deal with you. And like I said before I started this, whatever God gives you, hold it loosely so he don't have to call jaws of life to take it from you. And when he takes it, it shouldn't hurt you. It's a journey. And listen to me, Hebrews 12 and 1. 
Bible says, let us run this race with patience and get rid of everything that easily trips you. It's a race. First Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. Paul says, I run this race with the purpose. I run this race to win the prize. But only those who finish the race. Jesus said, John 17, I have finished the work that you have called me to do. Paul said, I have finished my race. But again, Paul says, you have to travel light. Some of you are so rooted and grounded if God was to tell you, go to Mexico as a missionary, there ain't no way you're going to go. Let me ask you a question. Are you so rooted in God or are you rooted in the world? Which one is it? Seven separation of Abraham. And you know, as you walk, you will have to give up something. Why are we studying our book when it is all over? It's all going to go in a box. Number one. And number two, I'm going to combine them. It is, you must leave your familiarity. I'm trying to use that word. Okay, number one. In Genesis 12, verse 1, the Lord say, come out from your country. What do we mean by salvation? You come out from this world into kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Paul say, come out from among them. Wait a minute. He is writing to the Christians. Hello? Church is gathering of the called out one. So why is he telling the called out one to come out? Because you have come out of the world, but the world hasn't come out of you. You still go to the same places you used to go. Do the same thing which you used to do. And hiding, I'm saved. God had great plans from Abraham. Listen to me. Karo Greater the calling, greater the separation. Tweet that joker. Amen. Greater the calling, father of many nations. Boy, don't just get hung up. I'm going to be the friend of God. I'm going to be father of many nations. Higher the call, higher sacrifice.
Don't get excited that God has called you, but you're not ready to give up. Can't have your cake and eat it. What fellowship? Light with the darkness. Christ with idols. My question to you, let's not talk about Abraham. The first separation is this. Come out from your country. Let me ask you a question. Uh, which country you carry your passport from? You know, September 11, 1996, I stood in front of the judge, federal judge, in downtown, lifted my hands, and I became a citizen of United States of America. First thing I have to do, just give up my Indian passport. But you so smooth, you're carrying both the passports. When you come to church, you carry a heavenly passport. We are not dual citizens. I know some nations say loves you. But in the kingdom of God, either you are for God or you are against God. Number two. Abraham was separated from his country. Now he said, come out from your family. Some of you love your family more than you love God. I don't go to church because my wife ain't going. Let me ask you a question. Is your tithe, I'm talking about me, my ties with my spiritual family is stronger than my natural ties? I don't despise them. I love them. I pray for them. But it will never take place. And in the name of I want to get them saved, you so tied up with your family. You're not tied with the family of God. Oh, you're going to rest all day tomorrow, so come and take it like a man. In this church, we're going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. My job is to take you to heaven, but before I take you to heaven, make sure I am going, because I don't want you to go to heaven and look for, where is he? And I ain't there. Jesus said, in Matthew 10, 37, you cannot love your mom and your daddy and your brother and sister more than you love God. Again, I'm not saying you should pray for them, but you spend more time with your family than with God and with people of God. Pastor, I thought he said covenant family church. Yes, it is. But you come and your family will follow you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. But you ain't coming, so how do you expect your family to come? I have said that we're going to fill this church with your family when, when you get sold out to God. But you're carrying two passports, so... Hello? Number one... First separation was from his country. Second was from his family. Separation number three. He was separated from self-preservation. God called him. He came out. Left the country. Left the family. Now... 
Please look at me. You think when God calls you, he will lead you in a green pastures. Oh, no, 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 no. The Lord is my shepherd. He's a good shepherd. He will lead me in a path of righteousness in a green pasture. But let me tell you something. In the same Genesis 12, verses 10 to 20, and Bible says, there was a great famine in the land. Lord, what's up with you? And see, that's how what somehow we preach. Oh, come to Jesus. All your problem will be over. And I say, come to Jesus and whole hell will follow you. But you don't want to hear that. You came out from the native country. You came out from the family. Now he's in a dry country. Now he goes over there. And what did God say? I am with you. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. I will help you. I mean, God gave all these nations. And this man thinks that uh, God needs help. That's not the first time. We're going to find out later on. Listen to me. Somebody needs to hear this. God who has called you is big enough to keep you alive. No, 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 no. Let me say it again. God who has called you, he will keep you alive. You don't believe me? Go talk to Jacob, the crooked sub crook. The Lord appeared to the crook. Oh, the Lord appears to crooks more than the, the holy ones. The self-righteous ones. He's a crook, but he still wants to follow God. And the Lord said, Jacob, I'm going to keep you alive until every word that I promise you comes to pass in your life. I cannot die. Let me say it again. COVID-19 cannot kill me. Why? I haven't finished the work which he has called me to do. So that thought don't even come to my mind. So Abraham goes there. Here is Pharaoh. He looks at Sarah. 75 years old and looking like a good old fox lady. That's what happens to you when you follow God. Oh, don't look at me like that. He will renew your youth like an eagle. Prime example yesterday, that, that young guy, he was counting how much money he's going to charge me. Woo, 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 woo. And he looked at me and said that, did you just say that you just turned 70? I wasn't going to give you a senior discount because I thought you was in your 50s. I said, hey. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying That God has to keep me alive. Prophet unto the nation, prophet over the kingdoms. He said, you will not retire. He didn't say, I'm going to grave. Mm -mm. I'll be 90. And if you are around, come by and see me preach. Oh, you didn't hear me. Don't say amen. <laughs> you have to say, yes, I'll be here to hear you preach. I, oh, yeah, so, some young bucks are going to preach here, but I'll be sitting right here. Oh, no, no, I'll be sitting, yeah, right there. When we separate, we get back. So he lied from self-preservations. If you are called by God, 
You don't have to hustle to stay alive. Even you are in a camp of the enemies. Did you hear of Mashata? Do you hear me? Don't just quote the scripture. In the middle of your enemies, he will prepare a table for you. Fear should have no place in your life. I don't care it is Pharaoh or King Abimelech. You can't touch this. Look at you and say, you can't touch this. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Look at that. Say, you can't touch this. You touch and you die. Thou shalt not touch the anointed of God. Do you know what I'm talking about? Even the death cannot touch me. Third separation was from Egypt, a land of self preservation. Number four. Okay, for the slow folks, number one. He said, come out from your country, change your passport. Number two, come out from your family. Doesn't mean that you neglect your family, but don't put your family above God. Number three, don't try to stay alive in your own strength. For the plans that I have for you, saith God. Number four. Get rid of excess luggage. You know, one thing I hate about traveling is packing. You cannot have more than 50 pounds in one bag. If it's more than 50 pounds, you pay $10 extra per pound. Why I am saying excess baggage? All eyes on me. I'm not talking about your houses, your cars, your finances. I am talking about excess people. They suck you dry. Slow down your walk. An interesting thing is this. Abraham had created his own luggage called Lot. And Lot got him in a lot of trouble. Oh, that will work. Because he did not follow number two, come out from your family. But he took Lot with him in case. And see, you don't understand the culture. In that culture, if that one don't have a children, maybe you can give me a child by this or child by this. Hey, come on, Lot. You're young. Young and dumb. Don't write me any letters. I don't read no letters. Just take it what it is. Abraham took him. Now the word you took, what God say not to, started fighting. And now you turn in a prayer request. Pastor, pray for peace in my home. The Lord told you not to, so why are you asking me? Your mama told you not to marry. And when your pastor says don't marry, you is not in love, you is in denial, child. That's what it is. 
Are you all right? You are still love me. Great at the calling. You got to get rid of the stuff and get rid of people. Don't hide behind this idea. I'm a people person. No. Jesus, listen to me. He was always among the people. But God was still number one. Before the day was up. Before the sun came up. Son of God rose up. You are so much wrapped up with the people. Oh God. I don't know about you. I'm having a time of my life, folks. You call that a ministry because you are always among the people. Under the idea, the shepherd must smell like a sheep. I understand that. But sometimes, people control you. Control your time. Control your anointing. Control your passion. And in order, in the name of the ministry, they suck you dry. And have to take a tiny little PM to knock yourself out to sleep because of the people. There is nobody more people like more than myself. But I asked my wife, how long does it take me to go to sleep? Less than a minute. As soon as I hit the, it's over. Whether I'm in Africa or India or Australia. But you know what? You sitting there. Oh, I wonder what he doing. I wonder what he going to do. Oh, shut everybody up. You need to be sanctified, separated from people. Yes, you are among the people. But don't let them slow you down, my child. Lord was slowing down his destiny. Which people are slowing down your destiny? Cut it loose. You don't want to hear this message, but I'm having a time of my life. And don't be so nasty with them. I got to cut you down. I didn't say all that. See, you still in chapter, you still in number one. You haven't been sanctified. You're still full of anger. And you still got your game like you had it. Ain't nobody helping me. I'm good. Seven separation from your country, from your family, from the land of self-preservation, from the excess luggage. Lord, what you want? Oh, I want this Jordan River. Hey, along this green pasture. And Abraham said, okay, don't worry about it. I will take the leftover. But after the leftover, God spoke to him again and said, I'm going to do what I have promised to you. One principle I live by, my wife knows it, Lily knows it. You call me, but if that is not going to take me to my destiny, I ain't got time for you. A lot of people call me, Pastor, come and preach. Can I pastor, do this, do this. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is it in my uh, job description? It ain't. And you know, these kind of things you learn when you learn to separate one, two, three, four. It, it gets easier. My message is this. If you pass one and two, three will be easy. If you pass one, two, three, fourth will be easy. If you pass one, two, three, four, number five is going to be easier on you. Number five. 
You need to be separated from desire to get wealth. We are near enemies wants to give you. By the way, number four, Joe, uh, Lot was in Genesis 12, 5, when he took it. Genesis 13 is a separation. Number five, Genesis 14. Lot chose all these things, worldly things. Listen to me. He was living in a tent. But in the same chapter, he finds himself sitting at the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah. Some of you think that you chose the world and the things of the world, La Moshotoria, and you think you're living large. You don't know you are at the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah, which God is about to destroy. It is too quiet in this Lutheran church today. Abraham took 300 of his soldiers and, and defeated four kings. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, high priest of the Most High God, comes and gives him bread and wine, and Abraham gave him 10%. For those who do not believe in tithe, you say tithe is under the law. Genesis is before the law. Nobody told him to give 10%. He gave 10. You know why? He was so happy that he can kill and destroy four stronger kings with only 300 of his boys. 318. Be careful, O Be careful who offers you what? You should have discerning where your blessing is coming from. I think I'm doing a better job teaching you today. The king of Salem brings bread and wine, but king of Sodom come here and say, look here, dude, uh, let me give you this. Let me hook you up. Listen to me. Let me talk to you so you can understand. You need to be separated from all your hookups. Come and go with us and we give you this, we give you this, we give you this. And by taking this, you are disqualified from running the race. You don't believe me? Go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. The devil himself come to Jesus and say, look at this. Look at all this whole world. Look at the glory of it. I'm going to give it to you. Just bow down and worship me. And you want so much people to enjoy you. People to clap for you. People to honor you. You don't even know what they are giving you. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, because I need to be separated. This is what we call separation number five. I am not for sale. Did you hear me? Huh? You can invite me to preach and say, I give you a million dollars, but I'm still going to preach what God wants me to preach. Let me give you one example, then I, 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 I done it. I was in India. I was preaching in one church. I didn't even know the, who the man was. I didn't. And I started preaching. Huh? And I, 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 I walked the aisle, and, and I saw this guy, and I'm talking to him. I said, I don't care. You be the biggest giver in this church. You may be supporting this whole church, but if you are not born again, huh? if you're not saved, you don't want to get saved, I will kick you out from my church. 
and the church, well, I can read the eyes. <laughs> and when the service was over, he came to me and said, who told you? I said, you told me about what? He said, I was controlling the, the pastor, and they call it the official board in a Methodist church by my money. I said, oh, did you hear me what I said? I'm going to throw you out. He said, let me get my life to the Lord Jesus and get saved. You know why? Because he said, listen to me, he said for the first time in my life, a man of God from the pulpit told me truth, nothing but the truth. All these people love my money and they wouldn't say nothing about my lifestyle. I remember in this church, I had just become a pastor and I was preaching. One man walked out. And I talked to him the next day. I said, Fool, what happened? He said, You're too hot for me. Because he was a womanizer, he was selling dope, he was doing all these things. He said, Pastor, I'm going to give this. I said, do keep it. And then I told him, I said, where you going is hotter than my message. Make up your mind. All glory belongs to the king of kings. Not, not on you. They will make you the king. But don't bow down because of money. Or because of pleasure. Or because of prestige. Or because of what you want to be seen by others. Let them see the king of kings and lord of lords. I feel like I'm standing in Pastor Dave Boy's church, preaching to 16 million people. Heaven is too good. Eternity is too long for you to sell your soul for a pot of beans. Don't be like Esau. Number one, separated from your native country, separated from your family, separated from the land of self-preservation, separated from excess luggage, and next one was separated from the wealth gained by evil for evil purpose. Number six, now we jump to Genesis 21. You need to be separated from self-made plans. Man made plans and calling it God. Oh Lord Jesus, I'm preaching better than you hollering tonight. Do you understand? You left your father's house, fool. And you keeping somebody else's pigs. Desiring to eat the slop. And calling it a ministry. I'm too young to be preaching like this. <laughs> but I'm pro. Doing it all these years. Ishmael! Abraham, I know you came from your country. You left your family. You left Egypt. You left Lord. You didn't want the money. But now! I'm getting closer to your heart. Up till now, it was all external. I'm getting closer to heart. Let him go! Oh, God. You don't believe me? Read Genesis 21, verse 11. Bible says, and when God spoke to Abraham, he was very displeased. God, no! 
But I am saying, greater the call, greater the blessing, greater the anointing, greater the sacrifice. Pay the price. I don't want to. But you know what? I value more than I value my self-made mistakes. My self-made ministry. So and so evangelical association. And when they die, that's the end of the evangelical association. Why don't you build the church on the word of God? I will build my church. And gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ishmael is gone. Now my text. And now it came to pass after these six separation, God tested him. All was external. With Ishmael, there was an emotional tie. Oh, God. Some of you are so emotionally tied up with fools. <laughs> now, the seventh one. The heart issue. Take now your son. Your only son, Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. And Abraham got up early and he obeyed God. Why? When you do one, second is easy. When you do two, third is easy. When you do third, fourth is easy. When you do the fourth, Fifth is easy. When you do the fifth, sixth one is easy. And when you do the sixth, you are there. You want what? Isaac, your son, your only son, whom you love, would you be separated from him? No problem. I will do it. And guess what? The seventh one never happened. He was testing your heart, your obedience. And now the Lord said, from this guy, all the nations of the world shall be blessed. Would you stand please? Let us not turn this into a, a service. Pastor, that was an awesome message. I want you to go home and, and pray like David prayed. God, search me and know my heart which six I need to be separated. So seventh, I give you my all, God. I surrender all to you. Not my will, but thy will be done. God, here I am. Send me. This is a prophetic message. This message is preached to the pastors, to the ministers. But never forget, you are a minister. Find out where the devil is putting a trap for you. And don't be so blinded in the name of ministry that you cannot see God. These are the days of revelation. God wants to reveal himself to us. In the middle of crisis, God wants to show himself strong on our behalf. But we need to come clean. 
And listen to me, it will not be easy. When somebody does a surgery on you, it's never easy. Amen. And this is a surgery without anesthetics. Take it like a man. For me to live is Christ. And die is gain. At the end, let it be said, he obeyed God. Period. I pray that the Spirit of God will separate us for his glory. For his kingdom, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come in the name of Jesus. May God give you strength my grace is sufficient for you for your sanctification go in peace and may God sanctify you wholly in your spirit your soul and your body in the name of Jesus be blessed I love you. Amen.